Alright, yo yo, welcome back to uh, the very first Malaysia uh, Virtual Property Expo 2017 brought to you exclusively by the HProperty.com. Uh, I'm back again uh, uh, as the first one uh, speaker that have two sessions, so this is the second part of my session today um, on this very, very extraordinary live um, um, online. So my name is Chris Tan, I'm the managing partner of Church Associate. Here I am today to share with you another very useful segment called Common Myth About Communal Living, What's Legal, What's Not. Now let's put it this way, a lot of us uh, uh, today um, are living in a condominium so where we need to pay service charge and also what we call a sinking fund. Now my question to you is that, um, do you know what is the real uh, uh, concern or legally what do you need to ask yourself, what are your boundaries, what can you do, what can you not, and today let's uh, blast the myth together. So my aim today is to share with you some very, very common myth that you from time and again assume that it was like uh, the way that you, you thought it is, but actually it was something else. Uh, one word of caution to you, a lot of people think that law are logical. Uh, let me remind you as a practicing lawyer for 17 years, law are very much illogical. So it's something that you want to comply or not to comply because the aim of the law is to regulate. So are you ready to talk about a little bit of communal living? So if you are actually staying in the urban part of Malaysia, particularly the, the bigger city like Kuala Lumpur, Penang and Johor, let me remind you, please pay attention. Now what are we doing effectively today? We are going to catch some ghosts, right? That's why we're putting up Ghostbusters here, is really, really to let you know, to clarify some idea that, or some myth that you probably wrongly assume in relation to strata living. Now, do you know that at least 6 million of um, Malaysian, which is 30% of Malaysian, are actually staying in the strata properties as at the end of 2015? Now, this figure has tremendously uh, uh, increased from the same report come into December 2012. Uh, I think December 2012, or then minister was actually reporting that 25% of Malaysia actually stay in a strata development. Considering that you know, our general population have also increased from 2012 into 2015, as 30% today is very, very significant. Now, the number of residential uh, unit, uh, strata unit in the country are at, as at end of 2015, again, is about 1.5 million. So, which means that 1.5 million uh, given about four in one household, you're actually looking at about six million. That's about right. And there are about 16,000 completed residential strata developments, including condominiums, apartments, service apartments, as at the end of 2015. Now, if you combine or compare with the figure at the end of 2012, it is actually gone from 15,000 to 16,000 completed uh, projects. So it's within three years, we have another 1,000 adding in to the uh, equation. And mind you, uh, these are number of projects, and each project have with a higher density have actually made this even more uh, interesting. So I'm um, humbly suggesting to you that if you are staying in any type of strata living today, I'm saying to you that you are actually staying on the preferred choice, the way of life of the future, right? Now, let's look at communal living. A lot of people say that, you know, when I use the word communal living, uh, people of the older generation will probably think of the concept called Rukun Tatanga, right? Rukun Tatanga was very, very common in the 80s and the 70s as a way of self-help to protect ourselves. I still remember my father's waking up uh, midnight every night, you know, go out, going out with some friends uh, with a, a, a long baton trying to protect the neighborhood. That was the spirit of Rukun Tatanga. I, I remember following him uh, in one or two occasions, uh, while well, I'm looking forward to the breakfast after that. But the whole idea of Rukun Tangana at that time, let me remind you, is more voluntary than anything else. Um, but today, the contemporary communal living have changed. Ever since the 90s, ever since 1985, where the uh, Strata Title Act has come into uh, effect, um, communal living have taken a different twist. Okay? We have now required you to pay what we call the service charge, and every month, and there's also a 10% of the same to be paid in the concept of a sinking fund. So what i uh, going to put it to you that is actually now a Rukun Tatanga with contract. So it is voluntary in the sense that you buy in to the uh, communal living, which is a strata project. And the next thing is that you agreed to be legally bound by two things. One is what we call the deed of mutual covenant, the house rule which you have 
sign in black and white in acceptance of the rules being the one that govern governance your 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 strata living in within, and plus also those that is not mentioned in your house rule because there's also such thing called the prescribed bylaw in today's context. So what are we effectively talking about? We're talking about Rukun Tatanga that is currently being regulated by the law as well as those that you voluntarily sign in when you bought into any strata unit for that matter. Well, let's start with uh, some myth, by, uh, with my myth busting. Well, for a start, a lot of people think that, you know, what kind of concept are we looking at? Um, for the longest time, even the English proverb seems to have this suggestion to say that my home is my castle, right? It was right before you move into a, any type of strata living. Uh, if you now live in a strata living, a condominium, a service apartment, a Soho, or whatever name you call it, where you need to contribute a service charge and sinking fund, your home, my dear, is no longer your castle. Uh, it is a simple concept that only within the gate of your house, within that, you have pure 100% control, but outside of the house uh, really is a common property. So I've changed the concept. Instead of my home is my castle, it is more of the concept of love, your neighbor, love your neighbor. So in, in, the, in that sense, let me encourage you. I, I know we Malaysians are very polite every time we are in the lift. You know, when we meet our neighbor, we like to say, how are you today? Good morning and whatnot. So next time when you see them, don't ask this question. You ask instead, have you paid your service charge? Sudah bayar. That would be more important. You know why? Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that everyone pay to pay their part so that the whole condominium scheme could be maintained in the perfect condition. Okay? Now, let's move on. Myth number one. So, we are here today um, going to uh, bust a few myths for you. We're going to catch a few goals. The first one is this. A lot of people say that communal living means strata development. Now, just ask yourself, what's your answer? Is it a yes or a no? Well, it doesn't matter. You better make a mistake now during these sessions. Uh, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is no. Let's put it this way. If you put it in the context of communal living, every one of us lives in a community. No one lives alone. No man is an island. So as far as we're concerned, in this country, we all live in the same community. But then, now the next question is that, would there be any other regulation? All right, let's put it this way. There are the communal living where every one of us is part of it. Number two, we also have this thing called the Rukun Takanda type of gym where, uh, regime, whereby it's more self-help and voluntary. Right? Then you have this voluntary gated and guarded community. In KL and Selangor, Greater KL, you'll find a lot of community which they gate on their own with single entry point, in and single entry point out. And within the community, they would have a facility that actually help, but predominantly is driven by security. So you have fences all around the bigger scheme of things, right? So it's adopted from the local authority, normally by residents association. Um, so just to let you know, association again is voluntary participation. And we are now talking about uh, one that you adopt from the local authority. So what it means is that supposedly is the local authority supposed to take care of the inner roads of this gated community, but because of the resident association request. Uh, so now, uh, instead of the local community, it is the residential association that actually regulate the whole scheme of things. Now the next thing is called the strata development. Now the strata development is more uh, regulated, one of the uh, smallest subsect in the, in the big scheme of thing. This one is driven by three stages of management. The first one is the property developer. Next is what we call the joint management body, where it's joined between the developers and representative of all the owners. And the last one is what we call the MC. MC is where only the uh, owners are involved. Uh, effectively, the developer is out at this stage. So a strata development is more regulated. They have specific legal regime for it. So we have the Strata Title Act and the Strata Management Act. And recently, both of them have been updated and it's in effect since uh, July the 1st, um, 2015. Okay? Now, next myth. Only high-rise buildings are strata development. A lot of, thing, a lot of people say, when you say strata, they say condominium. Is that true or is that false? So my answer again, let's myth the bus. The answer is false. Let's put it this way. Strata used to be, uh, before 2007, are only referred to condominium, those high-rise buildings. When I say strata, it's a subdivision of a title of a building. Then, because of more the sophistication, some new development coming, and also the expectation of security, uh, we have landed uh, a gated and guarded community. 
right? So a lot of time, I'm, I'm, I, I used to crack a joke to a lot of people who stay in condominium. They want to say that, hey, uh, uh, they have friends that admire, they have friends who, st who stay in all these luxury, gated and guarded community. So let me remind you, if you stay in a service apartment, if you stay in an apartment or any condominium for that matter, you, in fact, can tell that you actually stated, uh, also res uh, reside in a, a gated and guarded community. Isn't it? You have a guard house, you have a one entry, and everything is gated, and you are happily living within. All right? So just to let you know, strata developments in today's context could be a few. First, it must be a high-rise. It can be a high-rise building alone, so it's a combination of high-rise building. It could be land parcel with building, which means that there could be land parcel, right, of a building on it, and they are a common clubhouse for use to use. It's pretty common today. And it could also be a mixture of land parcel and high-rise building. Mixture of land parcel and high-rise building, what it means is that you could have land parcel on one side and high-rise building on the other. So the idea is, again, a strata development could be either for single or multiple usage. What I'm trying to highlight to you is that it could be for residential alone, it could be commercial alone, it could be uh, 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 for industrial alone, and it could be a mix of everything, which in today's context are pretty, pretty common. You have retail podium, yes, and on top you have one... One tower of office, one tower of hotel, and one tower of residences. Okay, this is the way of life. All right, so common property to be enjoyed by owner is also another feature, which means that other than everyone having their own parcel, there are things that everyone needs to contribute and actually pay for maintenance. So the idea is it must be also under one single underlying title. So if we move forward, there are two types of ownership that you can see in a strata scheme. First is the individual ownership of the main parcel and the accessory parcel. Uh, number two is the common ownership, which means everyone contribute, everyone have the ownership, and then it is used by everyone in the scheme. All right? So to put it very simple, all you need to know about strata living, always remember one title, one strata scheme, and then one management. Okay? So that's the second myth. Let's look at bursting the third myth. A lot of time we say that, you know, management is not performing, so I'm not paying service charge. I'm sure you will say, yes, yes, of course. It seems like a very logical conclusion. But let me remind you, no, a management is not performing, it's not a valid excuse not to pay service charge. You have to understand, what do you do when your employee is not performing? You are the boss, right? You cannot say, I don't pay your salary. All right? You can give them warning, you can ask, ask them to buck up their performance, but you don't say that you don't pay them. Because the money that you pay go in through the maintenance of the whole area. So just like a shareholder uh, in a company, all right? So your committee is like your director and you have appointed to the board. So what can you do? You can bring this matter to the committee, tell the committee that you're not satisfied with the management company managing the assets and also you can suggest to change the management company, all right? And of course, there are processes. You need to go through AGM, EGM to do that. So the myth number four, a lot of time they also say that, you know, I can't really tell what is the difference between a resident association, is it the same as the MC and JMB. Now, a lot of time, let me tell you, MC in here stands for Management Committee, JMB in here stands for Joint Management Body. Um, the easiest way that I can tell you between what is an RA and an MC and JMB, if you stay in a, a, a residential project that coincidentally having the MC, having the JMB and having the RA together, the easiest way that I can give you, it's like a government and the opposition. Right? The government, as far as we're concerned, we're talking about the MC and the JMB, and the opposition, we're talking about the RA. The whole idea here is to, for check and balance, and you can see that you know, for RA, for all intended purposes, it's actually regulated by the uh, uh, Local Council Regulation and the Society Act. So again, voluntary. So when you say resident association, it doesn't re really mean the owner at the same time. So well, while you're looking at MC and JMB, is actually an entity recognized under what we call the Strata Management Act, and only a valid, a legal, and registered and beneficial owner can become a member of an MC or JMB. So there's no such thing of uh, an RA situation. So established under the SMA and established under the Residence Initiative. One is voluntary, one is compulsory. Now myth number five. Now this is the very general one. A lot of people say, hey, can we keep pets in the development if a majority of owners agree? Can we really do that? Can you really put a, a, a dog at the high rise at the top of the things for your purpose? All right? Can you pass a resolution? Does it mean that we can do that? Now let me remind you that uh, we have to look at the strata regulation. The regulation says that you shall not keep 
any form of animal in the parcel or the common property and that may cause annoyance and nuisance to other proprietor, which may be dangerous safety and health of other proprietors. So it's a qualified consent, which contribute any written law. Uh, this is the key. Now, you might say that I stay in KL. Does it mean yes or no? Let's look at what DBKL said. DBL, DBKL said that in order to get a pet license, let's say for your dog and all this thing, you need to really get the MC approval, right? And in MPSJ, it's tidak dimenakan langsung, right? Which means that if you are in under the MPSJ thing, no dogs could be found in the condominium. So these are some very important and very in, uh, uh, interesting myth busting that I've done for you today. And can you just imagine who are you effectively? If you are paying for service charge, if you are paying for sinking fund, and if you are owner of a strata scheme, let me remind you, you are no different than a shareholder of a public listed company. You are invited to the AGM to put your contribution and appoint who is your committee. And always remember participation is the key. So do not actually, very simple, uh, uh, if you don't manage anything, then you are allowing the circumstances to manage you instead. So that's all I have to share with you today. So until we see you again, uh, I may I wish you a happy community living.